our next stop of the day and honestly i forgot to find I remember what time it was but it's uh, before noon we are in unionville nevada in pershing county the sign here says unionville nt for nevada territory uh, unionville was uh, founded in 1861 i have the wikipedia up on the phone that i'll I'll uh, talk a little uh, bit more about when I take a picture right in town. The, uh, my uh, phone uh, G uh, GPS said to turn right a while ago, and I guess it was on this Unionville cutoff road, but I didn't see it. It looked like a horrible road. I'm not getting stuck out here. When I get back in the car, somewhere down the line here, I'll... Uh, I'll mention uh, our adventures in France, but um, I ran into a guy, and hopefully you'll uh, you'll damn son, you'll see me pull up to him. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put him on film, certainly, uh, but his name is D.W. Hudson. He's a pastor. He's the pastor of the Church of the Good Shepherd, and he gave me his card. And, you know, I stopped and asked him if I was, you know, heading the right way to Unionville. And he said yes. And then he asked me if I was, you know, going to someplace a particular. And I told him, well, no, but I said, I'm a student of Nevada. And it is a personal shame that I have never been to Unionville. And so you could see it really brighten up and he offered you know you ever want to just you know sit and talk about Nevada <laughs> you know drop by the guy was in his 70s you could see hopefully on the film I mean he was in full cowboy gear dude uh, guys I mean just just the real deal he's not a Silicon Valley cowboy this guy was a cowboy he said he has never seen the internet he doesn't have email he never, never, ever, ever. So, 70 years old. He's been out here 40 years. Um, I said, oh my God, Pastor, you're living the life that I should have lived. So, I, mean, I don't want to be bronking cows. But, anyway, we're going to drive up into town. And then we're going to see what's there. So, we'll see what's next. I'm not quite sure what this building was, but... Uh, uh, it's here, and there certainly is a no uh, no trespassing private property. And bluntly, I respect private property. I sure try to. So, and you know, people are watching us here or me here. Um, when my brother Charlie, the Sherman driver, geez, was a deputy in rural Kansas in Comanche County, about the smallest in population county in the state, um, we were out. On patrol and off on a dirt road somewhere, um, outside of um, oh, damn, I can't think of the name of the town. I'll have to look it up. But um, um, Coldwater was the county seat. Oh, dude, I'm just having brain fuzz. But I'll I'll text it in here. Um, um Jesus. Anyway, um. We were on the dirt road and we stopped at the county line. It was on the road to Belvedere, which is in the, in the next <laughs> county over. And, oh, here's the country inn that apparently people stay at out here. It's the only business in town. So, and uh, people live out here. Uh, according to Wikipedia, the, uh, the population is about 20 at the last census. Anyway, um, we got out to the county line and we got out of the car, and uh, the patrol car, uh, and I made the comment something like, you know, damn, dude, there's, there's just nobody out here. And he looked at me and said, every ranch family watched us drive by or is watching us now. He said they're either watching us through binoculars or they're watching us through the scope of their rifle. He says, of course, they're not going to shoot us, but 
they kind of want to know why we're out here. Oh, look at the boy. Oh, look at him. Oh, hey, buddies. So, you know, you get out here in the rural and, you know, people may not, you know, people may approach you. People may not approach you, but they're going to certainly think, okay, why is this person that we have never seen kind of driving through town? And by God, if I lived out here, you know, I'd be having my eye open too, you know. Are you going to arson the, you know, the place out here? Are you going to dump a body? What are you doing? So, you know, then, you know, like with the Padre here, you know, when you tell him, I'm a, you know, I'm a student in Nevada and I, I've never been here. There you go. So, this is interesting. This is a uh, Trader Ranch. Um, I'm going to actually film this because I should film it as I drive by. Boy, the propane truck even drives out here. He's got two big tanks. He ain't, he ain't running out. And we need to call Uncle Billy and get this shit burned down. But nevertheless, so I, th I thought there was a park in town, but I'm not seeing it. So, Goldman... Coleman Pass is the road. Um, we're going to drive up a little more, but if there's not what I thought I was seeing, then I'm going to go ahead and turn around and we're going to head back. So we'll see. Next stop of the day finds uh, at the uh, Mohia Whitaker Memorial Youth Park of Unionville. I was hoping to use the porta potty here, and I can't seem to get the gate open. I must be a city boy. So we're gonna turn. Our, we've got the car turned around. We're gonna head back out. We're gonna get back to uh, back on the Interstate 80. And we're going to continue our trip and this day's drive, which will take us to Love, I mean to uh, to Elko in Elko County, Nevada. So we'll see what's next. We had rented a BMW Ford or Sedan diesel. It was a really nice hub car. I love driving it. We were in France on our way to Thepfall, where the site of the Largest single day casualties of the British Army happened in 1916 at the beginning of the Battle of the Somme. And we had two different GPSs and somehow it didn't steer us right. We made the wrong, <laughs> the, uh, the wrong choice at the V just like here where we're taking the right choice. And we ended up kind of on this dirt starting to turn into mush. We drove by uh, two hunters that looked at us like, what in God's name are you idiots doing out here? So we realized, you know, we're not going the right way. So we didn't get stuck. I got the car turned around. We managed to find our way back to the Y, take the right or the left arm of the Y and not what we took. We made it to the Vol and the museum, and it turned out to be... No, you know, it it would have been a whole lot worse had we had been stuck in the middle of the French rural countryside. countryside. So now we're going to see us get back on the Nevada 400. We're going to get back on the freeway and we're heading to Winnemucca.
I got, that's Maggie. I got the pet Maggie. You know that stuff brightens up my day. Hell yes it does. I'm in Winnemucca, and I'm at the Humboldt River, which as you can see is not really flowing today. Uh, Winnemucca was first here by the settlers. It was used because, here we go, Jesus dude, hold the camera. It was used, it was a place in the Humboldt River that was wide and shallow. And it was called Gravelly Ford because the settlers using their their wagons, their kind of stuff, wagons and such, could easily ford the Humboldt River here because it was shallow and it was gravelly. So that's why it's here up the street is something I'm going to film. That's going to be about it for here, and then we'll press on. I've already uh, texted my cousin. She's looking forward to me showing up. Life will be good. I may run a little bit more Win uh, Winnemucca, the other side of the, uh, of the main drag, not Winnemucca Boulevard, but we'll see what's next. Our next stop of the day in Winnemucca is at this log. And this log represents the Winnemucca to the Sea Highway which is from Winnemucca to Crescent City, and it's roughly Nevada 140, Oregon 140, uh, Oregon 62, US 99, now I-5, and then US 199 from Grants Pass to Crescent City. Now this log washed up on shore as I walk over here to the mural uh, and I'm right in the sun, all, always, always the sun. Let me stand in the shade. The log washed up in 1964. Here's the convention center and this nice little mural on the East Hall. You can tell this used to be a casino and it's not. But the, the um, log washed up on the beach in Crescent City at the 1964 flood and here's another close one too um so this is a 1400 it was jesus dude the tree when it fell was over 1400 years old and you know when you when you check your rings on the tree you you know this so somebody somebody counted 1417 rings so I wanted to point this out. I've uh, I've been through Winnemucca a million times and never really stopped at taking a picture of it. Uh, it's always I'm um, heading to somewhere else. Though the ingrate and I drove from Elk Elko to here once on the trip that we met Joe Namath. Um, and we overnighted here so we can go swimming which we did and then we got some food and watched the baseball all-star game so but i've never taken a picture of the tree or the log and just about done here and we're going to press back on interstate 80. god the sun dude and uh we'll see what's next I stumbled across this. It's the Humboldt County Courthouse here in Winnemucca, Nevada, in Humboldt County. 
Let me walk over here, though. I got the car running. Uh, probably not my brightest move. Sorry, Mom. Um, let me see what it says when it was built. Hold on. Um, the seat moved here in 1873. The courthouse was uh, built in 1874. The last, oh, shit, Jesus, dude, the last execution here was 1886. This courthouse was um, finished in 1921 on top of the 1874 foundation, which burned in a fire. Um, so there you go, it's on the, um, it's on the National Register of Historic Places. I'm gonna bet that this used to be the firehouse. Kind of hard to hide the architecture. In fact, it is. There's a sign right there. Winnemucca Firehouse, 1935. You certainly can't miss that Art Deco, even for the middle of the Nevada desert. So we're done. I think now we're done. And as I'm driving out of here, we'll see what's next.